It's time for another blistering report from the front lines of the cultural war for a constitutional America. And now, here's your host, Charles Benninghoff. You know, today's video gives me great joy because I, I feel that America is finally so close to getting Obama put on the tack that he needs to be sitting on and squealing from pain. Because... I started talking about the fact that Barack Obama was unlawfully spying on the Trump campaign back in January, well before Mr. Trump had even taken the oath of office. You can find a link to that video in the text below, as well as on our action page. I've been saying for years that the Obama administration has been using the NSA and a CIA to spy on Obama's political opponents. This is a horrible abuse of power and Obama really needs to pay a price for this. Now we know that Obama's politically appointed national security advisor, Susan Rice, was the one who illegally unmasked members of the Trump transition team. Many members of Congress are calling for Susan Rice to come and testify. I say, who cares about Susan Rice? Who cares what she has to say? She's a proven liar, numerous times. We all know how this story will end. It will turn out that Barack Obama and his Iranian-born Muslim Brotherhood White House confidant Valerie Jarrett were directly involved and they ordered the spying so that they could harm America in general and the Trump team in particular. So let's get Barack Obama on the witness stand and force him to testify. Yeah, I like that. And if you agree with me on this, stay tuned because I'll tell you how you can speak out to Congress and call for Barack Obama to be subpoenaed. Why do we ask you to speak out to Congress? Well, because it works. When enough of us speak out on an issue, the members of Congress listen and take action. Obama nominated an anti-Second Amendment zealot to the Supreme Court last year, a judge named Merrick Garland, a guy who did not deserve to sit there. The Garland nomination would have breezed through the United States Senate, and Mitch McConnell would have voted to confirm Garland. But the rank-and-file senators heard from our network of patriot activists, and they knew that if the GOP blocked the Garland nomination, the people would be behind them. Because of that, it now looks like we're about to have a fantastic replacement for the murdered justice, Antonin Scalia, appointed to the Supreme Court namely Neil Gorsuch. Yes, I did say murdered. Justice Scalia was found suffocated with a pillow over his head in his bed in a setting owned, controlled, and operated by zealous Democrats. Some say he had a death wish going there in the first place, but that does not excuse his murderer. As well, you can be part of our efforts to restore America to greatness. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and sign up for my newsletter so you'll never miss out on hearing the, about these vitally important issues. Now, on to the spying debacle. For those of you who don't remember when Susan Rice was Barack Obama's ambassador to the UN, she went on all of the Sunday talk shows back in 2012 and told the world that the Benghazi attack was, that killed four Americans was because of a protest over a YouTube video in which a Koran was burned. Susan Rice is a known liar. It turned out, of course, that the Benghazi attack was long in the planning, and I believe that the Obama regime coordinated with its Muslim Brotherhood liaisons uh, with this uh, Quran burning story. And now we know that Rice was the one who had Trump transition team members unmasked in intelligence reports that were distributed far and wide across Washington, D.C., all in the hopes that materials would be leaked to the media. What does the term unmasked mean? It means your mask is taken off, but for this purpose, it has a very particular meaning. When the government spies on a foreigner and happens to record a conversation of that person having an American conversation on the other side, the American citizen's identity is masked under the rules or concealed in the intelligence report. Only a handful of people in the federal government have the power to unmask a U.S. citizen in these reports, and Rice was one of those who did the unmasking. But Rice is a robot. Robot Rice. Rice acted only at the behest of Obama. She was under his control, domination, and supervision at all times. 
Here is Republican Senator Rand Paul from Kentucky talking about what a tremendous abuse of power unmasking of American citizens by Rice is. So Bring let's her just in, be very careful her, under, ask here. Her under oath. And I'm ask not her, defending Susan Rice. I'm ask not her whether, at all. Ask her whether President Obama ordered this or whether he knew about it. That is a big deal if the outgoing administration was actually literally sifting through things. And part of his administration already said we were going to scatter. We were going to get as much information. We were going to scatter it out there publicly to try to harm the Trump administration. This was a witch hunt that began with the Obama administration. Mm -hmm. Sour grapes on the way out the door. Right. They were going to use the intelligence apparatus to attack Trump. And I think they did. Uh Senator Paul is absolutely correct. And the only point I would disagree with him is this. Why bother having Susan Rice testify? Go straight to her boss because we all know Obama done it. He had the power of control, not Rice. Let's get Obama on the hot seat and make him testify under oath. Look at his track record. Barack Obama sold machine guns to a Mexican drug cartel in the hopes that Americans would be killed by those weapons. That was called Operation Fast and Furious. He did that in the hope that the killings would spawn nationwide hatred for our Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms. After thousands of Mexicans were killed by the fast and furious machine guns, and indeed some of the people in that France nightclub were killed by that machine gun in, in the fast and furious program. And do you think that somebody who would unleash that sort of a firepower on an innocent populace would have the have the gall to draw a line at spying on his political opponents when doing so meant gaining the upper hand on those opponents? No, indeed not. Obama's a man without moral or ethics. Obama has a history of spying on his political opponents, indeed. Listen to this headline from the Wall Street Journal dated December 29, 2015, and I quote, U.S. spy net on Israel snares Congress. NSA's targeting of Israeli leaders swept up the content of private conversations with U.S. lawmakers, close quote. Back when Barack Obama and John Kerry were negotiating the Iran nuclear deal, a deal that was reviled by both Democrats and Republicans in Congress, the Obama administration was spying on Congress and using the dirt that it collected to threaten and intimidate senators and representatives who were critical of Obama's deal. A reporter named Lee Smith writes in, Tablet Magazine, again, and I quote, Intelligence collected on American lawmakers and figures in the pro-Israel community was fed back to the Obama White House as part of its political operations. The administration got the drop on its opponents by using classified information, which it then used to draw up its own game plan to block and freeze those on the other side and terrorize them, close quote. A pro-Israel activist who was opposing the Iran nuclear deal told the Wall Street Journal that the Obama administration was responding within 24 hours to private conversations they were having. They were obviously being spied on, wiretapped by Obama. And depending upon how much dirt Obama had on his opponents, he may even convince many U.S. senators to vote in favor of the Iran nuclear deal, who otherwise might have opposed it. This is why Trump's wiretapping story is such a big deal. He used it for political power. Spying on your political opponents and pretending that it's for national security is illegal and it's abuse of power, and I believe it's criminal. Let's not forget who was on the Trump transition team as well. Representative Marsha Blackburn from Tennessee, Representative Lou Berletta from Pennsylvania, and Representative Chris Collins from New York, all Republican members of Congress. The members of President Trump's cabinet were also on the transition team. That includes Senators Jeff Sessions and Don Coates, Congressman Mick Mulvaney, Mike Pompeo, Tom Price, and Ryan Zinke, former Governors Rick Perry, Sonny Perdue, and Nikki Haley, and Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell's wife, Elaine Chow, who is now Trump's Transportation Secretary, which means Mitch McConnell's private phone calls with his wife were probably spied on. This was the dirtiest and most corrupt sort of politics that is usually reserved for banana republics or by use of patriots against something like the communist Chinese regime. We need to move the GOP to go after Obama and force him to testify under oath because these actions against patriotic Americans are unconstitutional and unlawful in my opinion. 
Fox News reports that American names were unmasked in intelligence reports last year a total of 1,122 times. Can you believe that? 1,122 times the Obama regime unmasked innocent American citizens and then distributed that information. This is not incidental collection, as Obama's team of cheerleaders in the media wants you to believe. This was deliberate, dirty politics, and Obama needs to pay a deep, dear, and profound price for his actions. He needs to be hauled in front of Congress and forced to testify under oath. What did Obama know? When did he know it? When did he do it? When did he unmask these things? When did he order this information to be distributed? Did he indeed order his underlings to do this? I think we all know the answers to these questions, but here's the bigger picture. If Obama is forced to testify and he lies under oath and we're able to prove it, that's an impeachable offense. Yeah, yeah, we may be able to impeach Obama yet. There is historical precedent for impeaching a federal officer after they've left office, and Barack Obama needs to be impeached for this. If senators and representatives have been manipulated into changing their votes because they were being blackmailed over dirt collected by Obama's wiretapping team, that's the worst scandal in America's history. Don't you think it's strange that former House Speaker John Boehner, who was always supporting Barack Obama's agenda and blocking congressional investigation like Fast and Furious and Benghazi, or that Boehner was always having secret meetings at the White House? I can't even tell you how many emails I received from people between 2011 and 2015 asking me, do you think Obama has some sort of dirt on Boehner and the other Republicans? My response was in numerous campaigns on YouTube and via email that surely Beaner's time in Washington, D.C. and his drinking habits resulted in him falling into not just one or two honeypots over the years and that Obama knew about this and was blackmailing him. And I also believe that the patriots who are behind our group and all of their communications to Congress clamoring for Beaner to go resulted in him being pushed out. I've had enough of Obama's dirty politics, and I say it's time to call him on the carpet and start grilling him. It's been proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that Obama's administration spied on its political opponents, including President Trump. So let's not waste time questioning Rice. She has no importance. She's just an automaton doing his bidding. Let's tell Congress to subpoena Obama himself, the Bam Bam Man. Get him up in front of the committee and put the steam on. Well, how can this get done? Here's how you can help. Go to our action page today and start sending personal letters to Congress, starting with the House Oversight Committee. Demand that Barack Obama be subpoenaed and forced to testify about his illegal wiretapping of President Trump and members of Congress. If the White House can abuse its power over senators and representatives, they'll do it to anyone, and then none of our civil liberties are safe, not a one. So I hope you speak out on this today. Take action. Go to our action page. Follow Bob Mallory's instructions and be your own action hero. Stay tuned because Bob will have instructions on the next screen to you to let you know how to get to our action page. This is Charles Benninghoff signing off, wishing you freedom, fulfillment, and God's many, many blessings. If you're on our action page on our website, use the form next to the video screen to select a program and send personal letters to Congress. If you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook, click the icon appearing now to find the link to our action page or check the video's description to find the link. Speak out today.